Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk and another church visit today. Today I'm off to Buncton Church. Now don't get confused with Duncton Church because I have also been there fairly recently. I'm going to Buncton Church which is near Whiston in West Sussex. It's an interesting church because from the road that I have just come you take a little walk across this delightful bridge over a little stream and then up through this well I don't know you could call it a ravine if you like or a little hollow and then you climb up this hill and the church is the other side completely isolated now up these steps back in the doomsday time back in the doomsday survey here was a village I think the village of Buncton uh, pronounced similarly but spelt very differently probably an old Saxon name all right let's just go up this path a little bit more and we'll see the very lovely two-celled church and we're coming into the graveyard here or the churchyard rather of the church I'm going to weave my way around this way so I should explain exactly where I am uh, and where Whiston and Buncton are we're just close to Ashington on the A24 uh, which is part of the Paris but we're closer to Stenning and in particular the South Downs at Changtonbury because Changtonbury Ring itself uh, sort of overlooks this area Whiston is a, a big country house right at the foot of Changtonbury Hill and this church is isolated now but as I said before there was a village here I'm going to go this way round the church which is actually the south side of the church which isn't the normal way that most people go they'll go around to the front because the door is actually in the front as you'll notice there's no tower here so this village that was here and the church was associated with the manor house that was once here uh, probably going back to the doomsday book but that now has all but gone except for a moat there is the remnants of a moat I'm not quite sure where that is originally they believe it was about only half full so that's quite interesting now there is a 17th century replacement um, manor house I don't know whether it's connected to Buncton Manor Farm or whether that's just the farm in relation to the manor house that I don't know but here is the original south door now walled up as you can see with the uh, the arch at the top and all the splendid brickwork it's a two-celled church so there's the the nave here and the chancel here built they reckon about seven um, 1070 which um, is interesting because at one time it was thought that the church was built from uh, by the monks at Cell Priory which is in Upper Breeding but that's now been contested because the church doesn't have any buttresses on the nave and apparently from what I read earlier today that can signify an earlier date and so it's pitched at about 1070 interesting on the chancel are these rather astonishing arches just look at them they go up like this and you imagine that there must have been an extension out here because very often when you see arches on the exterior of a church that implies that there was an aisle that had since been knocked down perhaps fallen into disrepair and pushed back but that apparently is not the case here Pevsner Nicholas Pevsner when he came and did his I think he was around in the 30s and he looked at all the buildings he said that this was um, astonishing because these were placed on the exterior purely as decoration so that's in itself is quite quite amazing and a, a unique feature we'll go around to the east end and it's got a, a very simple window as you can see there the church built from uh, some stone some sandstone 
but mostly flint and rubble. But there is, in there, tiles. If we come over this side, you'll see some more of these terrific arches with, I don't know what these are supposed to be, pineapples maybe, on the side here. Um, again, purely for decoration, purely for look. And, um, but yes, in amongst there is some tiles which are said to be Roman tiles because about half a mile away from here is a Roman road and a Roman villa was found with a hypocaust. So there was a Roman villa. So you can imagine that back perhaps in the Saxon times or the transition between the early Norman and the Saxons, when they were building this, they're using whatever they can gather. And here is the north door, which we'll go in and have a look. And I'll close the door so that we are alone. It's fascinating because um, above me there you see what is a classic early uh, Norman stroke Saxon window up there with the splay window. It's got little bell cot on the above with one simple bell which presumably would be there to ring to bring people to church um, for services. Uh, this may well have been part of the Whiston estate, so uh, local labourers, farmers, um, and people of the inhabitants would have, would have come here. One of the other things we notice is this very huge chancel arch, which I'm told is contemporary with the church. Now, somewhere, and I'm looking, there was a figure um, on the chancel arch, a figure that caused a bit of controversy, but I think it's totally gone now. Uh, it's a bit like the um, Irish, what are they called? Sheila, Sheila, I can't remember, Sheila Nagy, something like that. I can't remember what they call them. And it is um, quite an obscene little figure that used to reside somewhere here. Um, I wasn't sure whether it was a a man or a woman exposing their genitalia and it was up it was here until I think it was something like 2004 somebody came in took exception to this a sort of Mary White House I think and with a chisel destroyed it but fortunately there is a picture extant of that it is curious because when you look inside the church there is here this is in the nave, completely unrelated, a suggested archway here. So that would imply that there had been um, an aisle that way, but I'm not sure that that's true. It's very interesting when you try to decipher the, the various churches. This, I guess, is the north door here, um, and now is a place for flowers. Uh, and that was walled up some, some years ago. There's a window, suggested a second splayed window there that's been filled in. And there are, is a little bit of murals on the wall as well, just over here. Very light in the chancel, complete with its piscina, which was used for washing the um, religious paraphernalia. Uh, and presumably one's hands and things before you gave um, part of the ritual that went on. But very light, and it is still used. It isn't a redundant church. It is still used for services, but very infrequently. So it's a very, it's a very lovely little church. I do like coming here. You get a great feeling. At the end is the font here, which looks um, not as old as, as, as many others I've seen, although I'm sure it, it is pretty old and in pretty good nick too. I hope you're enjoying this video. Why not help me make more and become a patron? A small donation really makes all the difference and keeps me out and about producing these magnificent presentations. So go to baldexplorer.com 
and become a patron today. Uh, one last interesting thing that I read. This was a church of ease, the main church being at Whiston, the parish church. Uh, and then I think around 2007, the statuses of the two churches changed so that this now technically from what I understand is now the parish church and the church at Whiston I presume on the Whiston estate is now the church of ease and I assume that is to stop people going onto the Whiston estate I don't know uh, but this now this rather lovely church according to Wikipedia <laughs> is it's just that, the parish church. But definitely well worth coming and having a look. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, very quick, swift look round. There's lots of interesting features here for those who know what they're looking at. So do pop in, it's very accessible. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, become a patron, all those things, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.